All right, guys. My simple recommendation. It is a, all right, I'm recording. All right. Hi, guys. It is, well, now it's back again, a gorgeous day here on the planet in the end times in the green mountains of Vermont, where we have the sounds of the, uh, the weed whacker in the background, which is a perfect backdrop for today's comments of the day. Uh, here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe on this gorgeous Wednesday, July 18, 2019. And I've really got, I really, really have to be preparing for my interview with Julia Thomas coming up. So uh, we're just going to share a, a comment thread. It has been too long since I have had a, uh, we have heard from Andy the Gardener here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Uh, so Andy the Gardener is back with a vengeance today. The old Andy has returned from Zombie Island. He has returned from the dead to weigh in. This was his comment to my seven danger signs that you might be an apocaloptimist. So is Andy the Gardener an apocaloptimist or isn't he? This is the question that everyone who knows and loves Andy has been wondering, I'm sure. And I just knocked the... My computer is now knocking the camera over. I have no idea at this point whether I'm in focus and who gives a shit. Okay, Andy, you are. are you an apocaloptimist? I am an apocaloptimist of an elite special kind. I believe humans are causing an apocalypse hell on earth by destroying the biosphere with their never changing, predictable, mechanistic behavior in ultra plague population balloon, which they mostly celebrate as a great success. As there is nothing immediately stopping them, the direst future outcome is guaranteed. That is the apocalypse part. I am highly optimistic that humans will continue on their path of destruction, creating endless arguments to excuse themselves from A, any meaningful changes, even trivial, B, blame, C, putting an end to themselves in the ultimate act of just-in-time damage limitation, self-sacrifice virtue. Therefore, I am very optimistic and hopeful that most of the humans will relatively soon reap the perfect shitstorm karmic blowback consequences of the most endlessly brutal, vengeful kind. Just so everyone is clear, I am incredibly optimistic that most people are shit, will die horribly, and they all fucking deserve it. <laughs> so uh, Al McGarry uh, weighs in. Andy, that is an interesting perspective to be optimistic about the end slowing but surely enveloping us. I see your point, but Al McGarry uh, is going to keep right on planting trees right up to uh, the apocalypse. And this is Andy the Gardener's response to planting trees uh, at this point in the collapse. <clears throat> My, good for you if you own any land or have influence on any land I don't think there is any more worthy way to spend your few remaining months than creating a nature reserve. A nice bit of human exclusion zone for some of the life banished from the overall mega cancer. It's the only way to live a life of excellence. Just don't expect to be rewarded by industrial society for it. Sadly, any land taken out of circulation will increase the value of adjacent land, increasing its development potential, and, of course, individual good deeds 
do not absolve such humans from their fate. Nature's weighty pendulum does not discriminate between good people and the majority of people and will swing back to crush the clueless morons and the conservationist alike. And then all raw Paul, uh, all raw Paul weighing in on Andy the gardener. I love this. Andy, you may not realize it, but you are a radical extinctionist. You believe human life is pointless and disgusting and omnicidal and that humans should systematically cause their own extinction. Welcome to the club, Andy. And now Andy responding to all raw Paul. This is history being made on Humpty Dumpty tribe as the two biggest eco-Nazis in the tribe uh, get in a battle of wits. This is Andy's response to Paul. Paul, no, no, no. You have me wrong. I am not an extinctionist. I am more of a corrective punishment for rogue, out of kilter with nature speciesist. I certainly hope for extinction of industrial civilization pronto and putting humans back onto a proper footing vis-a-vis -vis their relationship with the biosphere. Humans have simply strayed from Gaia's righteous path and just need to be reacquainted with the old ways, which were happily endured by all previous generations of the scary tool-using social monkey i.e. small population, high birth rate, and an unpredictable short life of toil, hunger, and random pointless violence. <clears throat> Turning back the clock on the present generation of urban, corn-fed, scurrying masses would certainly involve the mental confusion, suffering, and eventual death of literally billions of people. Surely that is punishment enough for what they have done. Ignore my comments. I am actually a really reasonable and nice guy, a bit like David Attenborough. As a fellow zoologist, I agree with his conclusion bit about humans at the end of one of his programs on TV that although humans deserve a severe fucking horse whipping <clears throat> as a whole for what they have done to this planet, there is certainly a case for the preservation of some humans, even if it is an island in the middle of nowhere like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Attenborough's wise words struck a chord in my soul. Yes, surely it would be short-sighted to deny future generations the opportunity to view these magnificent animals. <laughs> Once again, uh, Andy Gardner proving himself to uh, be in my honest opinion, the single most uh, articulate uh, doomer on the planet. I am completely uh, confused as why Andy the Gardener is, is not the most well-known doomer on the planet. But Andy, it's great to see you back, brother. And I hope I did this in time because... You know, Andy has been letting me know that the YouTube cops are, uh, are, you know, axing more and more of his comments. Apparently, they're after Andy more on Collapse Chronicles that the cop bots have been taking down his, <laughs> his comments, cheering on the collapse of global industrial civilization. But anyway... I really do have to finally get ready for this interview with Julia Thomas 
if my computer will be so kind as to hang on for three more hours before it joins the trash heap of e-waste in Ghana to give some sub-Saharan African child some hideous form of brain cancer or whatever the future holds for this computer. Bye, guys.